What is up, everybody? My name is Reese. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be playing another game. I'm playing on the main account, as always, and we're going to get a 10-minute game today. Let's get into the chess. How is everybody doing? I hope everybody is doing great. Um, I've been posting a lot more recently on the channel. I'm trying to post three videos a week, right around there. Let's see what my opponent tries to go for. Okay, a Sicilian. I have played the Alapim the last video, and we got a French defense as a result of this. My opponent is playing knight to c6, kind of a weird um, response, not a main move at all in this position. I guess my opponent could play d5, and <laughs> we could get a um, very interesting position. Okay, he captures, going to capture back, and he goes d5. Okay, so we're going to get a different type of structure. This is important. A lot of people might think, okay, we just get an advanced French again, but the the thing is that his bishop is still open, guys, so we can't play e5 here. So we're going to need to capture this pawn. At first, this looks weird because I give myself an isolated pawn, but fear not. This is the uh, theory in this position. Now, a lot of aggressive players might play a move like bishop to g4, and we're going to get a very interesting line. Knight to c3, counterattacking the knight in the middle of the board. Well, let's see what my opponent goes for here. If I'm remembering the theory correctly, if he captures this knight trying to in between here, I think we go for knight takes d5, takes on d1, and knight to c7, if I'm remembering correctly. That seems natural. Okay, he moves the queen to a5. All right, so we have an isolated pawn. I think it's important to kind of remember what we're trying to aim for. In general, we want to control the square in front of the pawn. But I think there's a lot of tactics going on here. Potentially, our, my opponent might try and castle queenside. So I need to be kind of ready for this. One move I'm thinking about playing is a move like queen b3 to start aiming immediate pressure at this pawn in b7. Also, potentially trying to capture this pawn in f7. He could take on f3. I could take on b7 there. Very chaotic position. But you know what? I think this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to play a move like queen b3. And this is the interesting dynamic positions that you can get out of this Alapin. I really like the Alapin Sicilian. I think it's a really good try for a lot of players um, at the club level and even at the master level where I'm at right now. So, okay. He captures on f3. Normally, I would say that you need to capture back, but I was thinking I could capture on b7 here. Turns out that I really can't. <laughs> he just goes rook b8, and the bishop actually is defending the knight on c6. So we're going to have to capture. I know this looks bad, and at first glance, this might just look like I'm completely lost here, but these positions often um, you give up this knight, and you double your structure, and it looks horrendous, and you look like you don't know how to play chess. Um, but there's a lot of play for the you getting the bishop pair, first of all. You're getting the option of putting the bishop on h3. And if he ever castles queenside, you know, these bishops on this diagonal are incredibly dangerous. And I think a lot of people underestimate the the power of uh, the power of the bishops in this position. I'm still hitting the pawn on b7. So my opponent's got a lot of questions that he has to ask himself here. How is he going to defend? Maybe a move like queen b6. Just say, hey, I want to trade trade queens here. That might be one option. Let's see what my opponent's going to do. I might play knight d5 there, maybe. Trade, trade. I don't know. It's very interesting looking. Maybe I might capture as well. That also might be a, a move. And then I could just defend my pawn. My pawns do look ugly. I will say that. <laughs> they don't look great. They don't look great. Okay, my opponent castles. He has no fear. No fear. My opponent is, is asking to get checkmated here. Okay, so I can capture this pawn in f7, and then I'm setting up some ideas of bishop to h3 or even bishop to f4 in this position. He might want to, to try and capture on d4 and play knight to c2, which is extremely dangerous. I have to give that credit. Hmm. 
Let's capture an F7. This looks extremely natural. Knight takes d4 looks extremely dangerous. I need to be very careful here. Knight to d knight to c2 is looking actually really dangerous now that I'm looking at it. Maybe I need to start with bishop to h3. Hmm. Let's think about this. Bishop to h3, and maybe I just castle, but my king looks really exposed. I feel like I've made a mistake here in this theory. Maybe I messed up somewhere. Um, I feel like, obviously, I shouldn't be in a losing position right out of the start. I don't know if this is losing, but knight to c2 looks too strong. I gotta avoid this somehow. Um, bishop to f4 is probably, I just can't play it, can I? Knight to c2, king e2, I just can't do this. Yeah, so let's start with check. I wanted to put my bishop on f4 before doing this because it's honestly a lot stronger. But the problem is, is that he can play this move e5 and guard against my bishop going to f4. Otherwise, my position might just be nearly winning. Hmm. Let's play maybe let's just castle. My queen does protect my pawn on f3. And maybe I'm gearing up for a bishop f4 and maybe bring my rook into d1 or bishop to e3, for example, to maybe start attacking this knight. I have pressure on this bishop here. I'm not too happy with my position, but it is not the end of the world. I still have the bishop pair, and my position isn't all that bad, really. It really isn't. Okay, let's go queen to c4. He might take on f3, so I need to be careful. Maybe I check and put the queen on e4. Hmm. Let's check and put the queen on e4. I have some ideas here. I have some ideas. I need to be careful, but I want to play f4 to open my bishop and and kick this knight's uh, you know legs out from underneath itself. I want to, to try and pile up pressure on this knight on d4. And the other type of idea that I have is that once I play f4, my bishop's going to be very sneaky. He's going to come back to g2, and he's going to join my queen on this diagonal and try to attack black's king. He's going to be very sneaky. I'm going to go f4 here. I'm going to go f4. I think he, may, he might have thought that this move stops me from playing f4, but it really doesn't. I'm attacking this knight on d4, so he really can't move this pawn. And this knight on h6 doesn't really help him, right? The knight on h6 is kind of just a bystander, just sitting there, not really doing much. If this bishop can come back, suddenly you start looking at a big attack for me. Also maybe capturing this and trying to remove the knight, knight's defense on d4. Let's see what my opponent has in store. Maybe a move like rook f8, pile up pressure on this pawn. Hmm, very interesting. Very interesting position. Okay, he goes there. But he's not threatening anything right away. If anything, he's... Yeah, he's not threatening this because I can just simply capture. So I could swing the bishop back, but I would like to keep control of this f5 square. Maybe I move my bishop to e3 getting ready to attack this knight. Let's go here, guys. You know what? That's a very bad move. He can now take. Man, I just ruined my position. Dang it. That's a big blunder. Huge blunder. A gross blunder, in fact. <laughs> I'm mad at myself for that one. He can now just capture. And I... I was thinking about capturing, but now he captures my bishop. I, you know, I need this bishop pair to, to have an advantage here. Otherwise, my position's just, to be honest, really bad. That was a huge blunder. Oh, man. 
Ah, that's annoying, guys. Sometimes in chess, you just blunder. <laughs> can't, can't, uh, can't do anything about it. My opponent misses the move. Wow. That is shocking. That is really shocking. My opponent shouldn't miss this stuff. Okay. Obviously, this move looks terrible. I understand his idea. He wants to bring his knight into the game, but honestly, this is not good. Okay, let's see how I can correct my mistake. Let's play bishop g2. Threaten a mate. <laughs> I don't know why my opponent gave me an option. I, I'm kind of just flabbergasted here. I, I made a huge mistake in this game. I, I think my position... I don't know. It's hard to say because uh, the opening was extremely interesting. I, I have vague um, um, memories of you know remembering this type of ideas and, and attacks of some sort, but I don't remember the actual theory that I was supposed to play in this position. So, okay, he backs his knight up. Um, he's still threatening this pawn. Maybe we should just capture. Maybe we should just capture. Um, the problem is, is that he captures with the rook here. And it's a little awkward. Let's capture though. I need to do something. And if I don't do anything, I'm just going to be in trouble because I'm going to be down like <laughs> 20 million minutes on the clock. Okay, he captures with this, but... Okay, he's threatening a discovered attack, guys. So this is important. We need to be a little careful. You know, maybe we could just take the knight, but then he takes our knight. Hmm. I'm not afraid of losing my queen here. Huh. If he takes my queen, I'm actually not... I'm not that mad here. Although I, I just remember analyzing this and I saw that he has queen h5 here. Man, I analyzed this before and I was like, yeah, I'm losing this. I shouldn't play like this. And then I play like it. I don't, I don't get it. T today has been a frustrating day for chess. Sometimes it happens, but I'm going to continue trying to make this position work. Let's start with a move like b4, a sneaky move. I'm trying to get some counterplay on this pawn on b7. In general, I'm completely lost here. I should just lose, should just resign, give up, quit. <laughs> but I don't really like doing that in chess. I'm going to keep trying being be sneaky, you know. Knight, knight to e6 now, guys. Sneaky idea. Big fork. Okay, but he's now he's going into some tricks. He's going into some big tricks here. Um takes now, right? Rook b1 is going to come here, no matter what he captures with. So my opponent is messing this up big time. And, you know, hey, this is the reason why you don't resign. Even if you feel like crap, even if you feel like you should lose and you should never play again, um, this is the example game for you guys right here. So I stuck, I, I stuck, you know, I stuck uh, in here for you guys, and you need to do the same in your games. So Let's see what my opponent does. I'm creating some sneaky threats. Rook b1, maybe even swing this rook to c1. Look at these rooks. They're aiming at his king, aiming at his queen. Look at this knight undefended in the position. I'm attacking this rook. I think a lot of people here are going to crack under the pressure that I'm that I'm putting in this position. Let's see what my opponent does. Knight to d4. Okay. Very tricky move. Knight to e2 and queen to h4 is the threat. My opponent is extremely sneaky. That's not mate, though. I have bishop to h3 there. King h2, bishop to h3. He has knight to f4 there. Whoa. My opponent is extremely sneaky. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I was going to try and just play rook to e1. Yeah, that actually looks like the plan. I want to avoid his, his idea. Now, knight c2 doesn't work here. Actually, you know, it, it doesn't work because I can move this rook to b1. I thought that he could sack his queen, but then I take, take, and then take his rook, and I'm actually winning the game. 
This position's a mess. He can't take this knight either way because I can swing my rook to b1. Okay. He saves his rook. I'm going to put my rook on b1. Obviously. Obviously doing that. Now, where is his queen going to go? d2 to pile up on pressure on f2. That looks supernatural. That looks supernatural, but I have a very sneaky trick. I have a big trick here, guys. I'm going to swing my knight back to c5. Let's see if he falls for my trick. I have a very nice trick. If he goes, if he moves his king over to d6, I have knight to e4 forking. So my idea is to maybe play rook b7. He goes king c8. Yeah, he sees my trick. Okay. I have check on h3 here. Lots of different ideas. I'm just going to start by defending my, my pieces here. I think it's important to just cut out all the complications in this position and just create annoying threats for my opponent to deal with. And with the time situation that we're in, you know, no increment, 10 minute game, he's going to have to come up with something good. He's going to have to come up with something good. Let's see what my opponent does. Attacking the queen. Maybe you can take the pawn. I might just start swinging my rooks into the attack. Maybe try to pin his knight down as well. This is one strategy I need to be aware of here. He might be thinking about knight to e2 and queen to h6. He goes queen d3. Whoa. Check. Rook d1. Whoa, 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 whoa. If he's not careful, guys, king d7, knight to c5, watch out for it. Watch out for the fork. Watch out for the forks. Big forks coming in here, guys. Big position here. Pins, guys. This is a very interesting position. I also have rook to b8. Let's see what my opponent, let's see where he puts the queen. He's in a pin. He might have messed this up. Maybe queen to c4. Then maybe I go knight d2. Oh, this is a nice move, guys. Knight to d2. No, I don't like that move, actually, because then he can go knight to e2 check. Mm -hmm. I don't, I need to go quickly here. I need to go quickly. Let's go bishop f1. I don't really like moving this bishop, but I needed to come up with a move quick. And I want to keep attacking the queen that defends this knight. I want to tie him up to the protection of this knight. And now I can go knight to c3. Or knight to c5. I think this is even more aggressive. And usually the more aggressive move is even better. Still attacking this knight. 37 seconds. Takes check. This is an important check, guys. Let's see where my opponent goes. He's a runner. He's a track star. And I got another fort, guys. Winning this position. But... How are we going to do it on time? That's the question. 28 seconds on the clock. Can I get a checkmate? Making lasers here, guys. Preventing him from doing anything. Let's see where my opponent goes. He fell for a very sneaky trick, guys. Just to, He resigned in this game, and I won the game. Very, very, very tricky. But if he goes... Actually, this is just mate. <laughs> I'm hilarious. I thought he could go here. What am I? What am I, a beginner, guys? Okay, anyway. Um, let's look at the game. I went up to 23-14 uh, in the game. But let's look at the analysis. That was a very interesting game. I blundered. 
I stuck in the game and somehow won it at the very end. You know, that just shows you that if you don't give up, you can sometimes win positions that you shouldn't have. Um, my opponent's accuracy, or I played at a 71.2% accuracy, and then my opponent played at a 66.2% accuracy. Not the best from both of us, but eh, whatever. Okay, so let's look at the game. So this, I know, is all theory. Knight to f3. Um, you know, my opponent captured this pawn, pushed the pawn in the middle of the board, and we got to this position. Knight to f3. Bishop to g4. Knight to c3. This is all theory. He takes on, on f3. Knight takes on d5, takes on d1, check on c7, king to d8, and knight takes a8. And we have this very interesting position where he would probably move his bishop back to h5, and then I would try and rescue my knight by playing something like bishop to f4. This is, this is very, you know, interesting theory. This is important to, to kind of know if you want to play this position, so I take a deeper look into this when you play your games. Um, that being said, I went for this, and my opponent played this queen a5 move. I was unsure about what to do here. The best move is to play this d5, which does make sense, kind of kicking my opponent's knight out of the center of the board. Now, it's very important what I was trying to remember in this position, castles. And the hilarious thing is that this is the point in which we play queen to b3, as you can see from the engine recommendation here. We play queen to b3 here when he's already castled, queenside, captures, captures, knight to e5, and then we've dropped the bishop into this e2 square, where then we can kick the knight out of the center and maybe put position our bishops on these, these really good diagonals here, like this. Something like this, guys, um, with a big attack, because our rook's coming to c1, immediately attacking the king. So this is kind of how I maybe I should have played the position. I played it in a maybe a worse way, where I played queen to b3. Apparently, this computer... Uh, you know, the computer told me this was a terrible decision and I'm probably already in big trouble, but I took on F7 and the position was extremely interesting and, you know, knight takes D4. It looks horrendous for me, but, you know, the hilarious thing is that after I castled, I actually really liked my position. Um, it looks bad, but, you know, these bishop can maybe slide back and I do have some options with my bishop pair and with the, the opening of this king with these diagonals here. I hope you enjoyed this one and check up in the top right for a Discord. If you wanna join that, you have full access to ask me any questions you'd like and uh, get my thoughts. You, If you want coaching from me also, you can message me and I do, I'm a full-time chess teacher. You can uh, do that. And if you're interested in joining a Facebook group, you can join the Understanding Chess Facebook group in the description below. And other than that, I will um, talk to you guys on the next one.